Hello, my friend. It is another week that is heavy with independent beauty brand news. So much happening. First off, we got a huge shock this week. Beauty Bakery, who has been around since 2010, has abruptly closed. And the reason why they're closing is different than any other beauty brand that I have ever seen. I also did an exclusive interview with the owner and founder of JD Glow. Low Cosmetics. Last week, we talked about how a Prop 65 lawsuit was forcing them to rebrand, but there was a lot that was unsaid in that story, and I even had quite a few questions about why they were making the choices they were. So I talked to the owner, Deandra, on the phone, and I have all of those answers for us. Give Me Glow Cosmetics has some big changes happening over there, and once we make it out of indie brand news, we have another celebrity beauty brand that looks like it is on the way from a very unlikely source. I did not have this on my 2024 bingo card. Megan the Duchess of Sussex looks like she's going into the beauty world. I have that and so much more. Hang tight. We are getting into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about all of the beauty news that happened across the industry just this week. <laughs> There's, there's been so much that's happened and it seems, I feel like that every week, you know, I go into this research and I wonder, you know, is there going to be enough news? And there always is. That being said, if you enjoy What's Up in Makeup, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you are notified when a new episode drops. I will tell you the way my jaw dropped when I saw that Beauty Bakery was closing just closing. It wasn't like Suva Beauty where they had like a blowout sale where she said, you know, kind of told everybody exactly what was happening and why it was happening. And, you know, they have the blowout sale of 50% off, 70% off, and then they close. Oh no, Beauty Bakery is just closed. It's just closed. They emailed customers on March 28th and posted on their Instagram on March 29th. The CEO of Beauty Bakery, her name is Kashmir Nicole. She posted a strong message to go along with that of Christian faith. Faith. I will put the entire post up for you to read in its entirety, but I'm going to kind of summarize it for you because I'm seeing a lot of confusion around social media about what exactly Kashmir is talking about in this post. The post starts as I reflect on who I was in 2010 when I founded the brand and who I am today. I come down this corporate ladder grateful both for the change and that this journey ever even happened. Kashmir wants to redefine what success is for her. Felt like Beauty Bakery was a disruptor in the industry and that they challenged societal norms with, quote, foolish things of this world to confuse the wise. I will explain that in just a minute. But in her next chapter, she wants to redefine what success means to her by focusing more on knowing and loving God and less on validation through social media and choices in business. Then she thanks people for being a part of the Beauty Bakery journey and sees the this is an evolution into being, quote, guided by the wisdom he generously gives, lit by his ambitions, not her own. So like I mentioned, my jaw hit the floor when I read this, but it even further hit the floor, if that's even possible, when I was over on Twitter and my friend Lacey, who used to have a YouTube channel, still has a YouTube channel, but just hasn't posted in a while. Her channel is called Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. Lacey tagged me in a post and was like, uh, I heard Beauty Bakery is closing because she's starting a Christian podcast. I was like a Christian podcast. I did not see that, but Lacey pointed me toward the link. There used to be a hyperlink in the post on Beauty Bakery's website. As of this morning when I'm filming, the hyperlink is no longer there anymore, and that hyperlink leads to a podcast, and that podcast is called Silence and Song. If you were able to follow that hyperlink when you get to the podcast, it says, Welcome to Silence and Song, a new kind of beauty community where we uncover the beauty of knowing Christ. If life is a journey and we have our itinerary, if life is a battlefield, we have our marching orders. If life is a school, we have our syllabus. Number one, love God above all things. Two, love others. Three, make disciples to go out into all the nations and make disciples. 
Life is life and he's given us the way because he has given us himself. Silence and Song with Kashmir Nicole will support our father in those three endeavors. This is his platform, not mine. Fully submitted and devoted to him. There are three uploads to the podcast so far. One was an introduction posted in November and then there were two podcasts that were actually recorded on the same day in December of 2023. I listen to all three episodes, and there is one particular clip that I feel like is relevant to Kashmir's journey and possibly a clue as to why she really is closing Beauty Bay. Because if you are totally confused right now, you are not alone. I do think that I understand this, though, especially after listening to this clip. Here it comes. And I thought, maybe I owe people an apology. You know, I've been on a path that he asked me to go down for the last 13, 14 years. And he had specific instructions for being on that path. And those were to say his name, to bring light to darkness. And now after all this time, I noticed that I can't give entrepreneurship advice anymore because it's no longer a lifestyle that I can stand behind. I'm in a place where I have to understand if that's even biblical. And most will tell you it's fine. I once said that it was fine. But the relationship with Christ is not just an intellectual relationship. It's not a common sense relationship because what's common to man is probably not going to be that pleasing to the Lord. And I'm seeking to go deeper than I've ever gone before, which is why I need to be careful what I adopt as a path to follow. I want to give you an example. Society might say, grind until you get it. And like I said, I may have even said this before. And scripture will reveal the beauty in not having it. Society is saying, go out and get it. Grind until you get it. You can sleep when you die. He tells us to rest. Scripture will reveal the beauty um, in not having things. The beauty of counting God as our riches. In Luke 12, 21, it's the parable of the rich fool. And it says, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. If it's at your place of employment, you know, you can ask yourself, is this work even pleasing to him? What does he benefit from me being here? Does it enhance the kingdom? Have I introduced any others to the hope of Christ, the beauty of Christ? You know, what will support our shared purpose, my friends? Because we share a purpose, and that is to love God above all things. So this is a delicate issue because you know how they always say when you go to Thanksgiving dinner, you never talk about religion or politics. There's a reason why. And I know that this community has a variety of people. My community here has a variety of people with a variety of different experiences with Christianity, especially what they call evangelical Christianity. Some people call it fundamentalist Christianity. When I was a part of it, because I was, we called ourselves born again Christians. And depending on your experience with this, you may have a very strong feelings, some type of feeling, toward Kashmir's chosen path. And because this is such a personal topic, I just want to ask you before we get any further to please be respectful of each other in the comment section down below. Please be respectful of Kashmir. I truly 100% believe in freedom, the freedom of religion. So yes, we all have a right to our opinions, but if we can express those opinions kindly, I would really appreciate it. So that being said, let me go into my, my former born-again Christian brain and try to interpret what is actually happening here. One thing that Kashmir talks about is the narrow path. And if you have not heard this Bible verse, you may be confused of what that actually means. Here's where it comes from. Matthew 7, 13 to 14 in the Bible says, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road 
that leads to life, and only a few find it. Kashmir has chosen this narrow road, this road that is difficult, this road that is hard, this road that is not the popularly chosen road. She continues to support this when she's talking about how, you know, beauty and makeup and titles and shares and likes, those are all of the world. She does not want to be of the world. She wants to be of God. She does not value those things anymore. She values her relationship with God. And a motivator for that is that it is only this narrow road that leads to heaven. If you go through the big gate, not heaven. Go through the little gate, that's the one that she's choosing, that narrow path, that's how you get to heaven. So this is another perspective, and it's the business perspective of it. I would not be surprised, and I do not know this for a fact, but I would not be surprised if Beauty Bakery isn't doing as well as it used to. From my personal experience with the brand, I've tried a, quite a few things from the brand. The only thing I like from that brand is the flower setting powder. Everything else has not been good for me personally. And when I've talked to my friends about their favorite products, I've never heard anybody say Beauty Bakery as one of their favorite products other than the flower setting powder. Beauty Bakery, in my opinion, from watching this space, has grown and thrived on the marketing and the packaging and the whole bakery theme that they have of their products. This flower setting powder literally comes in a little flower bag. The packaging is so adorable. They had little brushes that looked like baking tools. The marketing is amazing. And if I'm being accurate about this, where a brand like this thrives is initial products purchases, but you need to move beyond that. You need repeat purchases, which means that your things that go bad or get used up need to be amazing. And I think Kashmir might be admitting this very thing in her statement. This is what she says. She says that she is often using the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. This is a statement about marketing. It's about those foolish things, those marketing techniques, the packaging, the little, you know, egg container that was full of beauty blenders that were really hard and not great quality. It was using the foolish to confound the wise, to make smart people give up their money because of this cute packaging. And with so many brands now competing at that higher end drugstore price, I would imagine it's very hard to hold on to customers on packaging alone. So I would not be surprised if even though they are sold at CVS, they are sold at Target, even though they have a wide reach, I wouldn't be surprised if the brand is struggling financially. And if that is true, Cashmere may just be tired of it. She may just be tired of the grind. Remember when Sharon Shooter from, from Umma Beauty shut down? That was one thing she talked about, was being tired of the grind. And that's something that Cashmere talked about in her podcast of, you know, that the world wants you to move and go and go and go and grind, and God is telling her to rest. So is Kashmir leaving Beauty Bakery to start a podcast? I would say that is not the major plan for Kashmir. I think that that's probably just a part of it. She is leaving Beauty Bakery, I think purposely not selling it because the money is not of God. I think she's purposely just shutting it down as a sacrifice to God, as a proof to God that she is a faithful servant who wants to live for God and not for all of these earthly things. And this touches me very personally because I used to believe all of these same things that Kashmir is talking about. I, what they call, deconstructed from Christianity in my early 20s, this, this very radical version of Christianity, the fundamentalist where it's either black or white, heaven or hell, do this or you're against God, that kind of thinking, I got myself out of that. I had to, to really work to pull my thinking away from that and he from what that kind of thinking did to me as a person because it really beat me down as far as how it made me feel on the inside about who I was and my importance and my, my purpose in life. It literally made me feel like I was absolutely nothing. So when I'm looking at Kashmir's story, what I hope with all of my heart and soul is that whatever path she chooses, that she finds happiness. However she can find happiness, I hope 
that when she looks back in 10 years, she thinks this was an amazing decision and that she is happy. If you personally are interested in buying more beauty bakery products, you can still get them. CVS and Target may still have some in store by you. You can also go to the beauty bakery website. If you click on the products, it actually takes you to their Amazon store where you can still buy a selection of products. Ulta's website also has some beauty bakery products for sale, but I would imagine once those are gone, they are going to be gone. Ooh, that was a heavy start to the show. My goodness. Okay, so let's talk about JD Glow, another independent beauty brand that is going through some changes. So last week we talked about how JD Glow was being sued for a Prop 65 violation. I will link that video down below for a full recap if you missed it. I'm just going to give you the quick summary here. So Prop 65 is a law that only exists in California in the United States. It's a labeling law. They've identified about 900 different things that if you put those in a product, not just cosmetics, but any product, you have to put a Prop 65 warning on the product. So for JD Glow, it was titanium dioxide, which you might have heard of from sunscreens. The issue with titanium dioxide is that when it's inhaled in a large amount, such as when you work in a factory that has a lot of titanium dioxide in the air, it has been shown to be cancer causing. That is enough for titanium dioxide in a loose powder form to to be one of those ingredients that Prop 65 identifies as needing a label. If you live in California, you've probably seen those Prop 65 labels, or you may not even see them anymore because they are literally everywhere. They're in coffee shops, they're in gas stations, they're at Disneyland, they are everywhere. Because according to Prop 65, a lot of things cause cancer. It's basically clean beauty on steroids. That's what Prop 65 is. But last week I had some questions after we told the story because some things just weren't making any sense. So I contacted JD Glow's customer service through their email and Deandra got back to me. We were able to get on the phone and clear everything up from her perspective and I wanna share that with you. Here's a little clip from last week's show of some of the questions that I had. One thing that I found is that the original complaint was actually filed in January of 2023. So well over a year ago at this point was when they they were originally given notice. But then on July 27th of 2023, they actually took the complaint back. There's a filing that says, please take notice that Environmental Health Advocates Inc. hereby withdraws its 60-day notice of violation against J.D. Glow. But then what's so weird is on the same day, it seems like they filed the exact same paperwork all over again. So I have no idea what happened there. The other thing that I noticed is that the product in question, the Spicy Loose Illuminator, it's still for sale on their website. And I don't know if they're limiting it to not shipping that product to California or something. Or but how is rebranding going to stop this from going through? The other thing that doesn't make any sense to me is that they're right. They should win this. They shouldn't have to pay any fees because they have less than 10 employees. Their thing was that if they don't physically go to California, then they are just automatically going to lose. But isn't there a system where you can like, call in virtually. Even then, wouldn't she be able to get a plane ticket from Louisiana to California? And that would be much cheaper than having to pay any kind of fines. Like, I don't know. I'm just sitting here with so many questions, but if I hear anything, I will 100% update you on it. This will fill in so many holes beyond the original questions that I had. So the first one was based in when these notices were sent out. So she was sent one notice in January of 2023 that they, you know, needed to it was essentially kind of like a cease and desist. You need to stop selling this stuff in California. Then in July, that one was taken down and they started a new one in July. But J.D. Glow didn't talk about any of this until late February of 2024. So a little over a year later, why was that? Well, it turns out we were missing a lot of this story. So according to Deandra, they did get the original notice of the violation in January of 2023. And at that time, she had never heard of Prop 65. She had no idea it even existed. So she looked it up and she was like, oh, 
It was then that she realized that this notice should not have been sent to them because there is a clause in Prop 65 that says if you are a government agency or if you have under 10 employees, you are exempt from putting Proposition 65 labeling on your products. She says that her and her business partner, Jen, Deandra, Jen, JD Glow, that they were pretty much the only employees of the company since the company started. She said she's always had less than five employees specifically. So at that point, Deandra reaches out to and Interno Law, the people that had filed the notice against her, and she explains this to them. This was March 10th of 2023, two months after they received the notice, which was well within the time that she needed to respond to this. Another thing that we didn't know that she told the lawyer at that time is that the product in question that Internal Law said had titanium dioxide in it, she says never contained titanium dioxide. It was the spicy loose illuminator. And what happened was, was that on their website, they had accidentally put the wrong ingredient list for this product when Interno Law looked at it. So what Deandra did was she went to her manufacturer and she sent the lawyer what they call the MSDS information from for the ingredients from the manufacturer to prove to the lawyers, hey, this never had titanium dioxide. Somehow they had this lab report that they had tested the JD Glow product and had found titanium dioxide, but JD Glow's lab said legit there was no titanium dioxide in any of the ingredients used for the products. So where did this test come from? Is it possible that internal law is using the same test over and over again for every single brand and isn't testing each individual product? I feel like that's possible, that they are just using the same test over and over again because testing is expensive. And I think that they're lying. That's my opinion. This is an opinion. I personally think that internal law is lying about testing the JD Glow product because I personally believe Deandra. Because Deandra told me something else that made a whole lot of sense. Titanium dioxide is a white product. It is white, white, white. The illuminator, the spicy loose illuminator, is the deepest illuminator that JD Glow sells. If there was titanium dioxide in there, most likely you would be able to see that with your naked eye because it would have all these little white flecks in it and it does not have that. So after this conversation that Deandra has with the lawyer, he says he is going to send over a confidentiality form and an affidavit for the two employees, for Jen and for Deandra to sign. Basically, it's like a statement that says, this is what we know to be true. Well, they did get the confidentiality agreement, but they did not get the affidavit. So... They didn't sign the confidentiality agreement because they did not trust them and I do not blame them. <laughs> I would not have trusted them either. So after that, Deandra just thought everything was done. It was over. They've pretty much told the lawyer, hey, we're exempt from this no matter what, whether you found titanium dioxide in it or not, we're exempt because we have less than 10 employees. So she thought it was all over. So what about the notices that Interno Law says that they sent in July? Deandra says she never got them. The first time she saw them was when I showed them to her. See seems to be happening here is that internal law was running out the clock because what Deandra told me was that after one year, if the brand continues to sell the product in the state of California, which remember, Deandra feels that she, number one, the product never had titanium dioxide, does not currently have titanium dioxide. They changed the listing on the website. There's no titanium dioxide happening. Plus they're covered under the less than 10 employees rule. They think they're in the clear. But after one year, if you continue to sell the product in the state of California, that's when they can start collecting up to $2,500 per day in penalties. And and it was at this point that Deandra's business partner, Jen, was officially served papers that she was being sued. And imagine the shock that these two women had getting served these papers, thinking that and knowing that they had done absolutely nothing wrong and now they are being sued. They did not have the money to hire a lawyer. Lawyers are really expensive and you pay by the hour. They did not have this money. So they started looking into pro bono lawyers that might take on their case and help them to figure out what they could do to save their brand. 
They couldn't find any. They kept hitting brick wall, brick wall, brick wall, because pro bono lawyers are typically for, you know, it's personal things, people, individual people that are suing each other for different things, not really for small businesses. Thankfully, Jen and Deandra were able to talk to a lawyer in California that specializes in fighting Prop 65 lawsuits. And he spoke with them for a little while about it and gave them some options. They did not have to pay. Thankfully, he had a retainer fee of $575 per hour. He did not charge them for that, which is so, so kind of him. The Prop 65 lawyer in California told Deandra and Jen to contact Internal Law because it could have just been a mistake. You know, you have these piles of papers and you end up filing things and sometimes things happen by accident and they didn't mean to file it. So if it was a good faith mistake, if they contacted Internal Law, it would be dropped. Or if it was bad faith, they would not drop it because they are looking for that money from JD Glow. This part reminds me of the Blend Bunny cosmetic situation in that it seems like Internal Law and Environmental Health Advocates Inc., which is the people that hired Internal Law, that they had a feeling that J.D. Glow didn't have the money to fight this all the way in court. And remember, if you remember from last week, these this pairing, this internal law and the environmental health advocates, this is what they do for a living, is they sue businesses in order to get money for Prop 65 violations. It's not an environmental health advocate situation. That's a nice little fluffy name uh, of using these environmental health advocates. It's just a way for them to make a lot of money. So in my opinion, they were a assuming that J.D. Glow couldn't fight it all the way out in court and they were looking to just get those fees. But what they didn't count on was J.D. Glow completely shutting down the brand. But one thing I asked her was, why did you need a lawyer for this? You should have been able to just show up in court and the court should have known that this was a violation and just dropped it. And she said that they needed the documents that they were sent to respond to the lawsuit. It needed to be filed in legalese, in legal language, and they did not know how to do that and they couldn't afford a lawyer to write up that paperwork for them. And if they didn't hire a lawyer to write up this paperwork, then that would automatically lead to a loss for J.D. Glow. And then they would 100% be on the hook for paying all of these fees. So at this point, quite a few of my questions were answered in, you know, the why is this still for sale on your website? Because it never contained titanium dioxide. And also they're protected under that less than 10 employees clause in Prop 65. There's no reason why they can't continue to still sell it. But the question still lingering for me is why are they just shutting down JD Glow and rebranding as her artistry? Why do they feel like they need to do that if they are in the right? And also, can't they just attend the court hearing virtually? Why do they have to show up in person? Because if you remember, they're in Louisiana. This court hearing is happening in California. And this is what Deandra told me. She said that the lawyer told her that she had three options to address this. She said they could close the business, they could settle, or they could fight it in court. And fighting it in court wasn't going to happen because they couldn't afford a lawyer. Second was settling and paying whatever fines the court had said. They couldn't afford to do that. So the only other option was to close the business. Deandra said if the LLC is dissolved, they cannot be sued. Regarding attending the meeting in person, she said that the initial meeting that was actually before the hearing started needed to be attended in person. That one couldn't be virtual, but the ones after that could be virtual. But because Deandra and Jen decided to close JD Glow, then it was a moot point. They just did, they didn't need to attend. I also asked, wouldn't it be cheaper to just attend that first meeting and fight for JD Glow even without a lawyer than it would be to rebrand? And Deandra said that she is not upset about the rebranding and she's okay okay with it moving forward with a new name. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, this was a targeted, purposeful, bounty hunting situation by a group that does this all the time. Deandra felt a little weird about me showing you the screenshot that she showed me, but this really solidified it for me and it made my blood boil. She showed me a screenshot of an order form. This order form from the back end of her platform that she uses to sell products was an order for one, just one, spicy illuminating powder at the cost of $16.36. It was placed on November 2nd of 2022, and the email address is at glicklawgroup.com. Gnome Glick is the main lawyer who is on the documents for Interno Law. The shipping address on the order for this one highlighter was to Gnome Glick's office. To me, 
that solidifies that this was an absolute hit job. So you may be asking yourself, how's Deandra doing? How is she after all of this happened? And she wanted me to share with you that she does not want anybody to feel bad for her, for Jen, for JD Glow. She says that she truly believes that everything happens for a reason and that she has made peace with the situation. She said her artistry is ready to move forward with a positive attitude and an optimistic outlook for the future, that there is something bigger and better on the other side of this. Talking to Deandra on the phone was absolutely lovely. You can tell the passion that she has for her business, for creating makeup, and I wish her and Jen and her artistry nothing but the best. Y'all, I kind of feel like those last two stories could have been individual videos all on their own, but we still have a lot more news to cover today. We even have one more indie brand story to cover today, and it has to do with Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So they put up this post on their Instagram this past week, and you can tell they're just trying to make this sound as positive as possible, and there's a lot of back and forth in it. So I wanted to kind of break down for you what this message says to me and what you really need to know if you are a fan of Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So here's the post they put up on Instagram. Feel free to read it in full. This is what I got out of it. So the biggest thing you need to know is that Give Me Glow was previously handmade. They made all of their products, but now they are no longer going to be handmade. They are going to be made in a lab. So the consequence of that is that they are the formula is going to change. It is going to be a different product than what you're used to with Gimme Glow. So why is this happening? Why are they making this choice? And essentially it seems like the reason why is because they're just growing too big to continue to hand press everything and their business, they wanna grow naturally. And businesses, they can only sustain handmade for so long unless you have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of hands, it's a lot easier to just have a lab create your products. They say in the post that the products will continue to be vegan and cruelty-free and that prices are actually going to go down and that the packaging is going to be upgraded. How are they gonna do this? Well, they won't have to spend so much money on the labor because they're gonna have machines do the things that people used to do. Therefore, they won't have to charge as much. They also say in the post that they're going to an FDA certified lab, which I think is very smart because what this says to me is that they are taking Mocra seriously. Mocra is the new law in the US that is going into effect to help protect consumers against adulterated cosmetics, against cosmetics that may be harmful. The FDA is going to keep track of cosmetics better. And one of those things is tracking what is coming out of manufacturing labs and how those products are being used. So if they're going to an FDA certified lab, then that lab is going to take care of the Mocra regulations for them. And I know that this was a concern glow specifically because they had posted on their Instagram about it not that long ago and talking about the pigments that are not FDA approved for eye use but are used in eyeshadows all the time here in the U.S. because they are approved in the EU just the U.S. just hasn't approved them for whatever reason but it causes a lot of complications for independent beauty brands. This now wipes that off the table for them because their lab is going to take care of it for them. The lab is going to make sure that all of their products that come out meet the FDA regulations. So congratulations to Brandy and the team over at Give Me Glow. I will make sure I keep an eye on the brand and let you know when they have new releases. Last week, we talked about Nicki Minaj as being the latest celebrity cosmetic beauty brand in the press on nails that she created with her nail artist. And we talked about how Orabella, which is Bella Hadid's whatever line, we're not really sure. We think it's some kind of cosmetic, but we're not sure. That that seemed to be the next celebrity line coming out. I, and I said at the end of the segment, I was like, we'll have at least two cosmetic brands from celebrities come out between now and when that launches next month. And what do you know? <laughs> Here comes another one. A verified Instagram has been set up for a brand called American Riviera Orchard, and it credits Megan the du Duchess of Sussex as the owner. There's nothing but a landing page on the website, and the Instagram is just one of those tiled looking Instagram posts. You can sign up for email notifications of when they launch on their website if you're interested. I did find an article in People Magazine about this that gave a little bit more insider information on what's happening 
happening. The brand filed for trademarks on March 9th for exclusive rights to sell a lot of different things. Cosmetic products, home decor, stationery, linen, small kitchen appliances, cosmetics, yoga equipment, gardening gear, pet accessories, more tableware, and jarred food products. All of them she has now filed for under the name American Riviera Orchard. It does look like this particular leg of the brand, the one that is on Instagram, is going to focus on skincare, makeup, and or fragrance, along with feel-good products like lavender sachets and bath and shower gels. It is important to note, though, when filing a trademark that you don't have to make all of the things that you file for at the jump. You can file a trademark with intent to use, with without actually creating any products. I forget what the time range is for when you have to have made the products, but you can file for all kinds of stuff just as a safety net to make sure no one takes the trademark for those things for at least a period of time. For a full list of all of the things that are possible, I'm not gonna list everything here for you. We will be here for way too long and it's really not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that exciting of a list. I'm going to link the People Magazine article down below. They go through it in a lot more detail. And of course, any updates that I see, I will let you know. So you remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Olaplex and how they weren't doing very well and that one of the reasons why customers were kind of turning on Olaplex was because they were being sold at Walmart. And Olaplex had previously been seen as this salon brand that you could only get at high-end retailers. And seeing it not just online, which is what I thought at the time, y'all were telling me that Olaplex was actually being sold in Walmart stores, that that cheapened the brand and made it feel less special, it made it feel less luxury, it made it feel less less professional to be in Walmart. But this is the thing that I learned this week is that Walmart wants to go that direction. Walmart wants to sell more high-end and luxury products. I know. The merchandising and vice president of beauty, their name is Creighton Kipper, told Business of Fashion that, quote, luxury beauty as a whole will continue to be a focus at Walmart and that they have seen tremendous success both in-store and online with the sales of luxury beauty products. Apparently, Walmart's customer base is changing a bit post-pandemic. They're saying more high-income families are now shopping at Walmart to get a deal. And while they're there, they're also picking up some of the more expensive products. The report says that high-income households are contributing to a 4% net sales growth for their fourth quarter fiscal results that ended in February. But this is where I'm at on it. So a lot of people see Walmart as a discount store, as a place where you go to buy things for a bargain. But there's this dichotomy going on where Walmart needs to raise up their reputation as far as being a place to get discounts, a place to get bargains, a place to buy low cost things. They need to raise that image at the same time, you know, people are looking at these luxury products being sold at Walmart and it's bringing down their reputation. So what I'm wondering is, will the Olaplex effect happen to other brands? And because of that, they will not want to associate with Walmart because they are seeing the drops of these brands now being sold at Walmart that now their customer base no longer trusts them as a high-end or luxury product. Or will Walmart raise their reputation enough that it won't affect the brands as much? It's going to be a race. And I don't know which way it's going to go. I am super curious what you think about this one. Let me know in the comments down below. And finally, for our lighthearted story this week, maybe she's born with it, but maybe she just uses a glow-in-the-dark moisturizer. Fans were confused this week. Uh, they were wondering if this is real or if it is an early April Fool's joke from Nikki Tutorials and her brand, Nimya. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Instagram video now. Tell me what you think. The caption on this post says, new and coming soon Nimya Glow in the Dark Moisturizer. Introducing our freshest launch, new Lip From Within Glow, new Ultra Hydrating Formula, new Nimya Fragrance Sensation. Founder Nikki Tutorials indulges in our upcoming Glow in the Dark Moisturizer for skin that not only shines during the day, but also lights up at night. Get ready to glow like never before because with Nimya, every moment is an opportunity to shine. 
Coming May 2024, stay tuned. In just a few weeks, the full magic will unfold. See, that's what makes me think it may not be an April Fool's joke because they're putting it out and saying that it's coming in May. Wouldn't they say coming next week, like to match up with April Fool's? Wouldn't wouldn't that be the thing? But they say that in just a few weeks, the magic will unfold. That's after April Fool's Day. I think this might be real. Because if anybody knows how to go viral, it's freaking Nikki Tutorials. She has done it so many times with so many different things. She knows the virality of something unique like a glow-in-the-dark moisturizer. People are going to be using it on TikTok. They're going to be showing their face glowing. They're going to be... Who knows what people are going to be doing with this moisturizer? (laughs) But I am very concerned. I am very concerned about this product if it is in fact real. Let's pretend that it's real. But this is assuming that this is going to be sold in the U.S. There is only one, count them, one, one ingredient that the FDA has approved for glow-in-the-dark makeup. That ingredient is luminescent zinc sulfide or a zinc sulfide containing a copper activator called copper chloride. Yes, it is approved for cosmetics, but it is only approved for things like Halloween cosmetics, cosmetics that are meant to be used infrequently, not makeup meant to you be used on a daily basis, not for skincare. The other thing is it is not approved for eye use. And I know a lot of people that take their moisturizer and they put it on their eyes as well. So this would have to be very clearly labeled as not for eye use. It would also have to be clearly labeled as not to use, but only occasionally. For a moisturizer, you kind of should be using it like every day, right? So there's something wrong here. But again, that's just FDA regulations. I don't know what's going on with regulations with this particular ingredient or other glow-in-the-dark ingredients around the world, but typically the FDA is more relaxed than other places. So I would imagine that the regulations will only be stronger in other countries. But Nikki Tutorials is smart and she knows how to market things. So I'm not sure what the game is with this. It may just be a way to get eyes on Nimya and the product will never come out. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, as always, thank you so much to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions to our Facebook group this week. I appreciate you so, so much. Our chat today is not happening. We are not having a live chat today because it is Easter Sunday in my time. We are also not having a live chat or a What's Up in Makeup next week because I will be in New Orleans at an event called Creators and Friends. And then I have a bunch of family stuff going on on so there will be no content on the channel next week but the following week i will be back full force and with that being said if you would like to hang out a little longer and you'd like to watch more of my content you are very very welcome to youtube should be recommending a couple videos for you over here to watch including last week's episode of what's been makeup top news it is going to be down there youtube's going to pick the top one for you based on your personal viewing history what you've been enjoying but if you do need to go you got stuff to do it's no problem thank you for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you and i will see you in a video very very soon bye